Lesson 1 1 Expressions and Formulas. This is an Algebra 2 Honors class, so this video will go very quickly. Pause it if you want to try the problems before I do them, or just pause it and replay it if you're struggling a little bit with the pace of the material. So, an algebraic expression means there is no equals. Equals means there's an equation. Now, I will actually use equals in a lot of these problems, but it just means I'm transferring one expression to another. So when you solve these, or simplify really should be the word that's here, you just use order of operations. Um, I'll write out some of this. I won't write out all of it, uh, and I apologize. My hands keep touching things they're not supposed to touch on the computer screen. So 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So this is 5 times 4 minus 4 over 3 means we have 20 minus 4, 16 over 3. And this is called using the order of operations. The classic order of operations is PEMDAS. And there's lots of mnemonics to memorize it. The classic is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This means do your parentheses first. This means do your exponents first then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction, with the caveat that these are done left to right. So neither one really ranks above the other. It should be multiplication and division together. Same thing for addition and subtraction. So a good example would be 8 times 4 divided by uh, 2, you'd go 8 times 4 is 32, divided by 2 is 16. If you did 4 divided by 2, you'd get 2. 8 divided by 2 would be 4. That'd be wrong. So that's how you do that. Same thing with the addition of subtraction. Um, yeah, that's it. So you can plug variables in and do the same thing. Um, be careful when you plug a variable in. Almost always put it in parentheses. So for example here, Again, getting used to my new tablet. We know that this is not negative 4 to the third. Those are two very different things. In this case, they're actually the same. But So I'm going to put my negative 3 in there. And I'm going to put my negative 4 in there. And my negative 3 in there again. Just because I think it will help me keep it straight. Negative 64 plus 3 times. 16 plus 3 is 19. 3 times 20 is 60, so 3 times 19 is 57. Gives me negative 7. So you can also use this in a formula. The area for trapezoid is and you draw your trapezoid. It says there's a base of 12, a base of 18, and you can just plug and chug. Twelve plus eighteen. And the area will give you 105. Um actually get this problem a lot on ACT and uh, uh ACT math tests, and I always say the same thing, cross out your eighteen and make it a twelve, which just means this distance from here to here, and then whatever's left over. 18 minus 12 is 6. Split it evenly, whether it's an isosceles trapezoid or not. Now you know you have two triangles. That's the area of one of the triangles. There's two of them, plus your 7 times 12 is the rectangle. Uh, I just don't like using the formulas. This is an example that I used because it's a complicated-looking formula. Order of operations could pop up, but... I also like going through the way to do the problem properly. So you get 21 plus 84, which is, shockingly enough, 105. So that's lesson one. Lesson two is the property of real numbers. So the natural numbers, which are n, go one, two, three, like you're naturally counting. 
whole numbers, which are W, goes 0, 1, 2. Integers, which we give a bizarre number, we call them Z, I believe. Which makes no sense, but whatever, that's just the letter we use. Goes negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Rational numbers, the word ratio is in here. We use the letter Q. And it's fractions or repeating decimals. So irrational numbers are numbers that don't fall into that category. Square root of 2, things like that. There's some debate whether pi, since it's not a repeating decimal, and e belong in that. But for the time being, we'll just worry about that. We'll go from that forward. So all of these numbers together, and I'll show you this, are called the reals. When we write reals, we write it with a double R, double-legged R. It's just the way we do it. So a, a Venn diagram really shows this quite nicely. We start in the very middle with the natural numbers. And then we add the number zero to make the whole numbers. And then we add the uh, negatives to make the integers. And then we add the rational numbers And then over here we add in irrational numbers, and all together we get the reals. Why? Just so you can keep the numbers straight. We would use these in proofs and definitions in geometry and upper level math. It's something to be aware of. It's not something to memorize and get tested on. It's just good to categorize numbers in your brain, especially when we get to rational and irrational numbers. And it's good to know that real numbers include all the rational all the integers, all the natural, and all the irrational numbers. So for negative 8, we would say this is a integer, and then everything above it, rational, real. Group 49 works out quite nicely as 7, so that's everything. It's a natural number, it's a whole number, it's a integer, it's a rational number, and it's a real. Point eight one repeating is a rational number. So we go with Q, and it's a real. I is actually none, because it stands for the square root of negative 1, which is an imaginary number. It does not fall in the rational field. And 0 is everything except natural numbers. The whole number, it's an integer. There's arguments whether it's an integer or not, but it's considered an integer for our purposes. It's a rational number and it's a real. Now we do quickly properties. Um, again, we just want to make sure we're all on the same page. We can add things, we can move things around, what we're allowed to do and not. Um, we're going to do addition and multiplication. So we have x plus 2 equals 2 plus x. That's addition, both ways. x times 2 equals 2 times x. Associative, we got, I'll just throw some letters in here. And we'll just do the a and the b. Same thing here, a times b times c, a times b times c. What do we care? Well, sometimes it's actually a little bit easier to do B times C first. So we can move that around and make the math a little bit easier. Some cool number tricks that you don't need anymore because you've got a calculator, but it's good to be aware of them. The identity just means 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. The inverse means 4 plus negative 4 equals the identity. And 4 times 1 over 4 equals the identity. So again, the second one is always multiplication. The first one's always addition. Finally, we have the distributive property, which is a little bit of both. We multiply and we do some adding. This is a classic problem where you just, I do my arrows. 
And as many times as I could, I put this negative in here because that's where people always make mistakes. So I want you to practice it as often as possible. 10m plus 2n minus 6m plus 12n. And then we combine like terms. Look for the m's. Don't forget our negatives. We get 4m. And look for the n's. Plus 14n. So now I give you a bunch of problems just to see if you know what you're doing. Best way to learn is by doing problems yourself. Good luck.